In this video, we'll look at some common riffs that use lower strings and string bands along with an open A chord. I'll show you examples from over 10 different songs, beginner to intermediate level, with up close views of how to play them, the music theory behind them, and of course, sometimes going off topic to talk about other riffs and licks those songs are also using, along with examples from my free web app, The Building Blocks of Rock, which you can find at guitarbiz.com. These type of riffs are just combining an open A chord with single notes on the lower strings. The A is barred. It'd be hard to do these type of riffs without using a bar. I suppose you could use just two fingers. And the bar, even though it naturally covers the note on the second string, a lot of times you'll, you won't hear it. It's a power chord type of sound with these riffs. Reach over with the middle finger, grab that note on the fifth or sixth string, and usually when you do this, you're alternating back and forth between the two. So the bar might naturally come up as you reach over and grab that note. Verse of Rock and Roll, pretty simple example of this riff. Just a single note on the sixth string, followed by an A chord. I don't really hear a bend in that lower note. And the A chord, as is often the case, you don't really hear the second string. The emphasis is on the root and fifth, the fifth, fourth, and third strings. Timing is pretty straightforward, just eighth notes on the first beat of every bar. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Then it goes to the D chord, does kind of the same thing using this riff. Single note on the fifth string, followed by a D chord. Again, it's a power chord type of sound. You don't need to worry about the note on the first string. Don't even need to finger it. Back to the A chord. Finally, the E chord up here at the seventh fret using this boogie blues type of thing. Now sometimes that note on the lower strings is bent, and when you do, you bend that way towards the floor. Bend the other way, you'll fall off the neck. <laughs> and these bends on the lower strings are usually a half step or less, meaning you're aiming for the note about one fret higher, or somewhere in between. You're not worried about doing a whole step bend two frets higher, like you would with some of the top strings. Back in Black, Chorus. Power chords, G, D, A. Reach over with the middle finger, grab the third fret of the sixth string, and bend. And that's, you're putting some muscle behind the bend. You're bending up a half step or so. So it sounds the same pitch, roughly, as one fret higher. <laughs> On the studio version, Malcolm, less of a bend, but you listen to Angus guitar in isolation. Definite big bend there. <laughs> Look at that B chord riff, where you just lift up the first finger, same as you see in Come Together and a few other songs. It's a common B chord riff. I love rock and roll. Open E chord, power chord. Then the single note on the sixth string, you bend it, followed by an A chord. That bend is maybe not even a half step. If you were bending a half step, you'd be bending up to the same pitch one fret higher. 
it's maybe not even reaching that pitch. And take your time, don't need to yank the bend right in the pitch. It's a slow bend. A, the open A chord, more of a power chord type of sound. Same thing with the B chord. If you can't do the bar, use the three string or even two string power chord version. Another bend, followed by that E chord, and then repeat. Couple notes about the timing. First off, the song is in four. One, two, three, four. But at the end of each chorus, there is a bar of three, four. Come and take your time and dance with three beats. Dance with three beats, yeah. Secondly, timing of that bend. That's coming in on a 16th note, not an eighth note. Here's the wrong way. Here's the right way. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That was the first guitar. The second guitar, Joan, she's playing higher up the neck using these basic bar chord shapes. Actually, just the power chord equivalents. E chord here at the seventh fret. Then the A and B using six string root chords. On video, you see her fingering the third string like she's playing a full bar chord, but you really just hear the bottom strings. So it's a power chord type of sound. And she's not doing the bend either, like the first guitar is. So this is good practice for power chords. Three, four. Interesting little thing she does there at the end on the B chord. Dance with me. Dance with me. B. Open six string. And then the E chord. And she's also doing the riff that follows here on the fifth and sixth strings. Starting at seventh fret. The first guitar, though, is higher up the neck, an octave higher, using this lick. Whoops. Just a simple bend on the second string. Finally, one last piece of trivia. You hear the octaves towards the end of the song. Fifth string root. Fifth and third strings. Mute the fourth string. So far we've looked at riffs where you're adding that single note on the sixth string. You can do the same thing with the note on the fifth string at the third fret. And just like the sixth string, you can bend it too. Sweet Emotion is a good example. You've got an open A chord and you're adding notes on the, both the sixth string and the fifth string. That fifth string even has a bit of a bend to it. Kind of happens naturally as you do the pull off to the open fifth string. Here's a close up view D, power chord, no first string. Include the open fifth string. A. Again, power chord sound, not hearing the second string. And the A chord is really short. It only lasts for a 16th note. Followed by another A chord. That one's an upstroke, starting from the third string. The reason it's an upstroke is, once again, the 16th notes. That second A chord comes in on the second 16th note of the second beat. Whew. Four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Followed by the single notes, starting with third fret of the fifth string, reach over with your middle finger, pull off to the open fifth. And as you pull off, it's a slight twist 
a little bit of a bend. It's not just a, it's a slight twist, giving it that slight bend. Third fret, sixth string, no bend. Open fifth string, back to the sixth string. Put it all together, it sounds like this. Start off slow. Three, four. Normal speed. Three, four. Another fun riff in that song is while they're singing Sweet Emotion. You hear one guitar doing this. Just to open strings to the A chord with a little hammer on on the third and fourth fret. Tie Your Mother Down by Queen. Good example of this bend on the fifth string. It's got that bend at the third fret. Maybe somewhere between a quarter step and a half step. Slight, but noticeable. with these chords. G power chord. D. C. Sus2. Can't tell if the four string is being played or not. To a G with a B in the bass. Check out Brian May's YouTube channel. He has more close-up examples of how exactly he plays some of those Queen classics. So why are these type of riffs so common? Well, they sound good. Well, why do they sound good? Part of it has to do with those notes on the lower string. The note on the fifth string is a third, flat third to be precise. Remember, the third is one of those three fundamental chord tones, root, third, fifth. And the note on the sixth string is the flat seventh. Flat seventh is a big part of rock and blues. It's part of the minor pentatonic scale, and it's also found in dominant seventh chords. So those are some fundamental tones, and when you bend them, it can get even better. Bending the flat third on the fifth string up to the major third, that's a really common sound in rock and blues, in licks, or in riffs. And when you bend it, you can start exploring the area in between the flat third and the third. A blue note. And with that note on the sixth string, the flat seventh, you're bending up towards the root, A in this case. And even though you don't get there, you're only bending up a half step to the seventh. Still, the seventh in music theory is what they call a leading tone. The ear expects resolution to the root. Ah, resolution. Other examples, starting with another one from Queen. Just reach over, grab that single note on the sixth string. A lot of fret hand muting going on in this one. Then all the way up here to another riff shape that probably deserves its own video. Red Barchetta. Sometimes you'll hear that sixth string bent, other times not. Played slowly. Three, four. And now for a brief tangent. Another example.
example, won't get fooled again. <laughs> the intro. And finally, speaking of the who, my generation, an interesting example of usually when you reach over, hit this single note, it's a single note. But in my generation, Pete alternates between the open A chord and then pitting his finger down, but continuing to play all the strings for that type of sound. Only down-tuned a whole step, so it sounds more like he's playing in G. Check out my other video for other examples of the riffs Pete is using in my generation. All right, that's it for now. If you haven't done so already, please remember to hit like or subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.